Hi there, it's Jeff and Cassandra from RV Parenting. And when we first bought our RV, we went out on the road for a month almost immediately. <laughs> and not only did our three kids come with us, but our two dogs came with us as well. And so this video is going to be sharing all of our best tips about bringing dogs on the road in an RV. So let's get into it right away. First off, RVing is very dog friendly. It's probably more friendly for dogs than it is for children. Dogs love being on the road. They love new scents. They love new sounds. Our puppies went to the beach for the first time and completely lost their minds. They thought that that was the greatest place ever. Why don't we actually live there? It was just fantastic to see them because they get so much joy out of these new places that we're going, you know, walking in the woods with them in Georgia and then chasing squirrels up trees. It's just they're, they're little terriers. So they really enjoy chasing after <laughs> animals and woodland creatures. So for them, it's like being at Disneyland, but for puppies, it's just fantastic. They really enjoy being on the road, which is surprising for us because when we adopted them, they didn't like being in cars at all. They didn't love it. And But I'll, I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, another wonderful thing about having them on the road is they get constant attention. <laughs> like your cats, they're like, eh, did you feed me? Is my litter box clean? The dog's like, you're gonna spend 24 seven with me in a small vehicle for like three weeks? Let's do this human. They really <laughs> loved it, they did. Like, they, I think our children bonded more with our dogs being on the road, just mm -hmm. our dogs, we have an alpha and then we had the beta and they switched places actually when we're on the road. It's like new personalities, they're, they're whole new people if, if you can say that about dogs when they're on the road. So yes, RV life is fantastic for the fur babies. <laughs> and we'd never had dogs previously when we had rented RVs. So this was all new territory for all seven of us. And I really think it went way better than whatever it was I was expecting. And I don't even know what I was expecting, but it was a blast <laughs> and all of us loved it. But one of the questions that comes up, of course, is when you are traveling in an RV, it's different if you go somewhere and you stay put for a long period of time, but when you're traveling around, you know, the question like on our last trip, for instance, we went to Disney World and we didn't bring our dogs into Disney World. So what do you do with dogs when you're parked in an RV campground. And there's a few different ways to go about this. We saw lots and lots of people that had like a little portable fence in the outside area, just outside their RV, within the confines of their campground. I will say that some places don't actually want you to leave your pets outdoor in these confines. So you can have them as long as you're out there, but you're not, they don't really, it's really frowned upon just leave your dogs outside and the gates, which is kind of what kept us from getting that, honestly. Yeah, we thought about it. And, and of course, you know, if you're going somewhere like Yellowstone or other places that are technically bear country or mountain lion country, you absolutely do not want to do that. So what we ended up doing was we got some dog crates, some oversized dog crates. They're collapsible, so they store very easily on the underside of our RV, and then they assemble in just seconds. We have two of them, one for each of them, and we just put them up in here. Of course, we left the AC on and the heat. And the music, because they don't have to be alone. <laughs> yeah, that, that way they were entertained, they were climate controlled. We had their doggy beds and their chew toys and things like that in here. We were a little unsure about just letting them roam free in the RV while we were gone, because we didn't want them to chew on things, the terriers, so they like to chew on things. So we thought the dog crates, again, these are oversized with their doggy beds and chew toys and music and air conditioning. We thought that was probably a safer way to go and it seemed like it worked really, really well. The dog crates are awesome and they're inexpensive. Like I said, they're totally collapsible. Then they come back together again when you need them. I'm gonna link to them down below on Amazon in case you wanna check those out. But that was a really, really good way to go. I do think we will probably get that dog fencing that I mentioned and use that at some places based on you know where we are, how long we're gonna be there and what we know about the wildlife in the area. Because again, you don't wanna leave your pets unattended out there like that if there are predators in the area where you're camping. That is so true. And I'm going to tag on a little bit to what Jeff was saying about, you know, confinements and having, you know, the crates. The reason we chose the crates is, again, they're terriers, but they're new sounds, new smells. And so, you know, you have to worry about accidents and chewing up 
your RV because they, <laughs> they will do that. I mean, that's just kind of, the, the, it's, they can't help. It's like, where did my human go? We're around each other 24 seven and now we're not together anymore. Mm -hmm. And so we definitely found that the, the dog crates were a comfort for them. They really liked it. Um, so you kind of want to keep a little bit of attention, like what's your dog's anxiety level? What are they comfortable with? How long can you leave them? Like, but they can handle that. It's okay. They're going to be safe. Just take them to the bathroom before you go and then take them as soon as you get out um, to kind of avoid having accidents inside of the dog crate. Another thing for accidents, make sure you have some fragrance free spray. We use Febreze the mild in case there are accidents because you know if the dog smells it, they're going to keep going back to that space and just separate them. For instance, Chai, our little fluffy terrier poodle, um, she had an accident in our bedroom. So from the rest of the trip, we had to make sure that we kept our bedroom door. So just preventing them from going into the space that they feel is their bathroom, if you will. And lots and lots of chew toys, you know, whatever <laughs> they enjoy gnawing on, like, I think that really helped them cope because they're just like babies. They need something like, ah, and so, and so much new stuff. It's so exciting. My sister-in-law um, gives her puppy CBD chews. For her, she has this one dog, um, Leroy Jinx, who gets really nervous in the car, and we were worried about that. And she suggested these CBD tablets, all natural, puppies love them, and it's not motion sickness, so there's no drowsiness. It just keeps them from that anxiety that, you know, mm -hmm. encourages throwing up and encourages, you know, the, the extra chewing and scratching and clawing. And Rescue Remedy is another good one that I've used before that, uh, and then they have one that's designed for pets. They have them designed for humans too, but, um, but just to help with the overall anxiety level that that works really well too in my experience yeah our girls we rescued them from the side of the road they were found on the side of the road just kind of dumped and uh, we took them in and they were really nervous about being in cars we couldn't get them in the car without them having complete anxiety attacks so mm -hmm. we just keep them at home but the second they got in the rv it's literally it totally changed their their lives yeah. they love being on the road so just because your dog might be a little off kilter at home, give, give them a chance on the road. It's a totally different experience. And we knew our girls were anxious in the car. So what we did leading up to the RV trip was we would just take them on small little journeys to like the dog park in the neighborhood and things like that, just to get them used to the idea that, okay, they get in the car, they go somewhere and they come back because again, they were dumped. So they're used to thinking of the cars are bad things. These people are going to lead me somewhere on the side of the road. And so we wanted to get them through that before we actually got in the RV with them. Yeah, so th and, and it works, you know, just it's just like you would treat a child. You just want to take those extra little st steps to make sure that they're comfortable and happy. Mm -hmm. So another question that comes up with dogs and RVs pertains specifically to travel trailers, which are sometimes called camper trailers, or fifth wheels. These are both RVs that you tow behind a pickup truck. And of course, you probably know that you're not supposed to ride in there, at least human beings, but a lot of people wonder if it's okay to let the dog dog ride back there while everybody else is in the pickup truck while you're driving down the road? And the answer is no, it's really not safe. It's not recommended. And there's a few reasons for that. First and foremost is you're towing this camper and you're relying on the mechanics of that trailer hitch and that ball, or in the case of a fifth wheel, you know, it kind of um, kind of sits over the back of a pickup truck, but you're still kind of relying on mechanical pieces of hardware to keep the two units together. And it doesn't happen often, but those hitches can fail. And if they fail and the camper trailer comes loose or the fifth wheel comes loose and has a serious accident, you don't want anyone, even your dogs, inside of there when that happens. So you also can't control whether or not they need to go to the bathroom because you can't see them. You can't control if they're bouncing around all over the place because of being jostled around on the road. So always keep your dogs wherever the rest of you ride when the vehicle is in motion. Don't put dogs in the back of a camper trailer or a fifth wheel. One of the best benefits of having dogs on the road is the potty breaks. I know that sounds nuts, right? But potty breaks mean you have to get up and walk the dog and explore. Because sometimes after, after you've been traveling all day, you just want to chill, or at least I do. I'm ready to just kind of relax and zone out. Well, our girls at home can go in and out of their doggy door to go to the bathroom. 
But when we're on the road, you know, we have to get up. We have to be motivated to go check out new hiking trails or walking trails or just being out and about. I found myself being more out and about because of the puppies <laughs> than without them. And especially taking breaks when you're on the road, you're more inclined to stop and, and absorb your scenery, you know, because with kids, you're like, oh, just go use the bathroom. You know, we have a bathroom. You don't have to stop for that. But with dogs, like, no, for real, I need you to pull over. <laughs> there was a morning. We were actually at a campground in St. Augustine, Florida. There was a morning where I took the the dogs, we call them the girls, I t we took the dogs out for a morning walk. It was just myself and our toddler, Layla, and we got down to the water's edge at our campground area, and there was a bald eagle 20 feet away from us. And that was something I'd never seen in the wild before, and we wouldn't have seen it if we hadn't been taking the dogs for a walk. Yeah, the sunrise walks in the morning, you know, it's like when you get up and they're like, okay, I've been holding it all night, let's go. And just having that time alone, it's just, you don't realize how therapeutic they are until you, you let them do the <laughs> job that they're meant to do, and that's be your companion. Mm -hmm. So yes, RV life with dogs is the best in my opinion. Anyway, I hope this video helps convince you that bringing your dogs on the road in an RV is an awesome, awesome thing. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. It sends a great signal to YouTube and then they're going to show it to more people just like you. And then of course, smash that subscribe button and the bell notification button too. But with that, we'll see you in the next video.